You always want to make sure when the camera starts that you're not picking your nose. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the week has been pretty busy. Uh, lots of things went on and some things didn't work right and it was one of them weeks where I was about as busy as a one-legged man in a three-legged race and that don't work real good, by the way. And so uh, my mind was on about a million different directions at one time and trying to comprehend things. And uh, sometimes I just, <clears throat> my mind just is, has two speeds. It's either wide open or it's not moving at all. So it, if, it's, if it quits moving sometime today, well, you know, well, You'll kind of understand that. So I'll, I'll be reading out of Acts chapter 3. <laughs> and this is uh, about where uh, Peter and John went to the temple to pray. And uh, there was a man there that was crippled from birth. And, and uh, But I'm, I'm going to kind of skip part of that and going to pick it up in about uh, verse number 11. <laughs> Uh, that's after the healing of the man and, and uh, I'll just read a bit <clears throat> yeah, maybe I'll get my glasses first I could probably see it but just in case you know <clears throat> and as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? For why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he, that was Pilate, was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, which I still can't hardly comprehend that, and killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead, wherefore we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see now. Yea, and, and the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, uh, what not through ignorance ye did as ye did also your rulers but those things which God before has showed unto by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer he hath so fulfilled repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. Lord, we thank you for your word that gives us direction, a little guidance. Help us, I pray, to listen to your word, to hear your word, and to obey your word. Amen. So, Peter and John was on their way to the temple. And then we have this guy that was sitting by the uh, gate of the, of the temple. And uh, he had to depend on somebody to pack him there. And when everything was done, to carry him home. And so there he begged by the gate uh, to 
get his needs met. And why not be in a, in a place where you can see things? Uh, you know, where, where people's gonna see you. Uh, I think about those people at Walmart, you know, that hold up the sign, need gas. And, and I always wanna roll down my window and say, eat beans, but uh, uh, probably probably not the same thing, but or or uh, you know, it always makes me laugh when I see people that look older than me. They hold up the sign and say, "Need diapers," and I'm thinking, "Who needs the diapers?" <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> they're in a prominent place, so a uh, high traffic area, so they can. Get their message out that they're they're wanting some help and you know you go down to Oklahoma City and those busy intersections there's all them panhandlers there and you always wonder do they do they really need help or yeah. or they just making a living. yeah making a living you know you, you always wonder and uh, I just <clears throat> I don't know <clears throat> you know I guess you you kind of need to decide that for yourself but this guy, apparently, it was quite apparent to people that he was crippled, he couldn't walk, so he couldn't, couldn't really make a living for himself. So he wanted the people to, he depended on his friends, in his colleagues, anybody he could, the mercy of others, to carry him to the gate of the temple, where he could sit, and people coming in and out, praying that they would, hoping they would be kind to him, to get a little substance. Um, maybe they would give him something to eat, maybe they might give him money, you know. It, it doesn't say that he was begging for money, he was just begging for help. You know, he was just asking for help. Uh, and he needed it. And when all that was done, you know, he'd have to rely on somebody to help him get back home, wh wherever home was. And it doesn't say what his home was. So when he saw uh, Peter and John coming, he said, oh, two guys that might help me out, you know. He just looked favorably upon him. And Peter says, look at us. He said, boy, hot dog, I'm, I'm going to score here. You know, he thought he's going to get something. But then Peter started saying, silver and gold have I none. And this guy was probably thinking, well, okay. So much for a, the big score. I wonder what I'm going to get. Maybe, maybe a leftover piece of a biscuit or something, you know. But he went on to say, I don't have any silver. I don't have any gold. I don't have riches of this world. But what I do have, Hallelujah. what I do have, I'm going to share with you. Praise the Lord. And that is what God gave him. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And then he, he didn't just turn his back on him and walk away. He didn't say, okay, there you go, I, I'm done. Nope. It says he took him by the hand and helped him up. He finished what he started. And it, the Bible tells us that the man went into the temple, you know, he was... You know, I'm pretty sure he didn't go in the temple saying, yep, got me healing today. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's okay. No, it says he was pretty excited. You know, he was walking, leaping, praising God. You know, I'm thinking he was going, woo <laughs> He was fired up. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say how old the guy was or how long he'd been there, but I'm kind of thinking he'd been there a while. So he was pretty fired up. He got deliverance. And so when he got into the temple, well, when we picked it up there, verse 11, you know, he, was, he went in with, with uh, uh, Peter and John, and, and, you know, he's probably patting them on the back, and, and probably he might have been hugging her neck. I don't know. He would, he'd just been pretty, pretty excited. And the people that had known him, they would have known that, hey, 
This was the guy that couldn't walk, he's outside. So they rushed over there to, to see what was going on. And I take it by the scripture that they thought that maybe Peter or John must have been some kind of doctor or, or maybe a magician or something. And Peter says, okay, you guys, why you look at me? It's not like we did this on our own. We didn't do this. It wasn't us. It wasn't us. It was Jesus. And then he went on to tell them who Jesus was. He just he didn't just tell them, well, that, yep, it was Jesus and going about his business. No, he, he took the time to explain to them it was Jesus, the one we call the Christ, the one that you guys and your leaders and and some of some of your party crucified. You decided you wanted to murder instead of the do-gooder. You hollered for the murderer. Although Pilate had, had found no guilt in him and knew it was just out of jealousy that you guys wanted to do him in. And he wanted to, he, he wanted to set him free, but nope, you guys kept hollering for the murderer. So to appease the crowd, he had Jesus crucified. He said, yeah, he said, you guys might have done this in ignorance, but I tell you, it was, it was God's plan from the foundation of the world. I'm, I'm reading it up. You know, I'm, I'm just thankful that I'm not very well educated. I'm just kind of a dummy. You know, I'm, I hadn't been to college and, and got all that good book learning stuff because I'm reading this book. Well, I'm trying to read this book. I'm really struggling with it. And this guy writes it. It wasn't uh, God's will to send Jesus to earth to die on the cross. It was his will to, to have men follow him. And I'm thinking, are we reading the same book? Because the Bible tells us that from the foundation of the world, from the very beginning, when everything started, it was God's plan for Christ to come and be the perfect lamb. To take away the sins of the world. Now that's a pretty big burden. John chapter one tells us uh, that he he's light, but yet men love darkness more than light. Can't can't imagine that. I live in the country, and when the lights goes out, you can't see nothing. And in the summertime, I, I have rattlesnakes, so you might ought to grab a light before you go traipsing around in the dark. So, so I can't imagine, I can't imagine men loving darkness more than light. But they love darkness more than light because then their deeds are supposedly not known. But Psalms tells us that day or night doesn't make any difference to God because he can see just as well in the dark as he can in the light. So he knows. He knows what you're doing. In fact, matter of goes on to says, before, before a, a word is formed on your tongue, meaning before you even thought of it, he, he, he knew it. Sometimes that's kind of a scary thought for me. <laughs> yeah. They crucified Christ sometimes out of ignorance and sometimes out of hatred and envy and spite because they love darkness more than light but peter went on to say well 
okay, whether it's out of ignorance or, or whatever, if you come to the light, if you come for a cleansing, and let God cleanse you, then all is good because Christ, because of what Christ did on the cross to take away the sins of the world. Now, as, as long as you're going to be packing around the sins of the world, you're going to have lots of burdens. And there, there are, uh, I listen to the radio some, and, and I hear some of them preachers, they, they make it sound like when you come to Christ that, oh, everything's going to just be hunky-dory, and then your problems will be solved, and, and you'll be a smooth highway from, the, and, well, I don't read that either. In fact, matter, Jesus told his disciples that the world hated him. And if they were going to be followers of him, the world was going to hate them. Now, if somebody dislikes you a little bit, are they going to be nice to you? And if they just outright hate you, aren't they going to uh, make life as difficult for you as possible? Uh, so if Satan hates you, and he, and he hates God, and if you're a follower of God, guess what? He's not going to leave you alone. He's going to make your life just as miserable as he possibly can. Psalms tells us that many are the afflictions of the righteous. That, that don't sound like smooth sailing to me. But it doesn't leave it there. It says, out of them all, not just some, not just a few, but out of them all that Christ delivers. What Peter and John was trying to tell these people, and see, he, he told them it was the, the God of Abraham and Jacob and Isaac, their forefathers, people they would have heard about, known, and learned about. And he brought in the fact that, that Christ was there to, to be their sacrificial lamb. What he was telling them, that God is the God of the living, not the dead. That there is eternal life. And there is deliverance through Jesus Christ. Not that everything will be smooth sailing. The moment you decide that uh, you're going to start living right and that you're going to start trying to draw closer to God, well, Satan's going to start throwing all kinds of stumbling blocks in your path. Because he can get you to slip up, well, then that makes him feel good. And he don't, the devil don't care about you. He just cares about doing you in. So he can get back at God, because he hates God. The Bible says that God so loved the world. Why? Why? Because we already read here in the scripture that they crucified his son. He knew that before time because that's why Christ came into the world to start. He 
And yet it said because of his great love that he gave his son to take away the sins of the world, become our sacrificial lamb. And the Bible tells us that God is love. But it also says that judgment begins at the house of God. And uh, in Peter, it, it asks the questions. If the righteous, if the righteous scarcely be saved, we might call that the skin of your teeth, although we know there's no skin really on your teeth. But if the righteous just barely squeak in, <laughs> scarcely be saved, I think the King James calls it, They just squeak in the door. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? That's a pretty scary thought. So when we accept Christ and we are freed from our sins, and we lose the weight of the world, then we need to be just like this guy in Acts chapter three. We need to be walking and leaping and praising God because our burden has been lifted. To come to the acknowledgement having Christ as our Lord and Savior to deliver us from all unrighteousness. Not that there still won't be trials. Not that there won't be any more temptation, but that we have somebody that walks beside us to deliver us from all things. Let us pray. Father God, truly, truly we can't fathom the love you have that you would take upon you the sins of the world, that all we would have to do is call upon your name, the name of Jesus Christ. No other name given whereby we must be saved. No other way, Lord, than through the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you will help us to draw closer to you through thick and through thin, Lord, for that reassurance of eternal life. In Christ's name, amen. You know, it, one, one other thing, you know, it was kind of like the rest of the story. <laughs> it talks about the name of Jesus. And it's through faith in his name. If you don't think the name is important, then if your wife's name is Sue, uh, try calling her Becky and see if that works. Yeah. If your husband's name's Bob, try calling him Fred and see if that works. The name is important. Thank you, Jesus. So you'll step up on high. Thank you, Jesus. Acknowledge his name.